It's a frosty and chilly morning here on the homestead. Fall has definitely come. And even though it's mid-morning, the sun is taking her sweet time before she comes up over the mountain ridge and begins to thaw out the garden. And even though everything is very frosty, don't let it fool you. There is still quite a bit of growth and things going on in the garden. The kale is so delicious after it's went through a frost. And even my beets are hiding beneath this icy layer. But let's head back into the house and warm up by the fire before we come back out to harvest. These are my absolute favorite days of fall when you have those crisp, icy mornings, and then the afternoons give you that reminiscence of summer. Oh, they're my favorite. But it also means that I need to get myself in gear and get out here into the garden and bring in the vegetables that don't really survive a lot of freezing and thawing, which is exactly what these type of days do. And for me, the crops that don't do so well, or they're only gonna hold on for so long when that happens, is my beets. So you guys are gonna join me for the beet harvest. Even though all the warm summer crops are gone, a fall garden offers quite a bit. Today we're bringing in the majority of the beets that are our harvestable size to get those preserved and put up for the winter. But I will show you in just a little bit ways that you can extend your beet harvest, even if you're experiencing those icy frosts and those hard freezes. I find it easiest just to pull them all up, leave the stems on or the beet greens on, don't break them yet. And then I simply take them to the garden hose for a quick cleanup. I find it easier than trying to do this all at the kitchen sink. So just give them a good spraying off. And then I like to break and do all of this outside. So just trim off your beet greens, leaving about two inches so that they don't bleed all over the place. Aren't they a gorgeous ruby red color? This will help with the bleeding and as you prep them for our preservation. And then the beet grains, I've got plenty. I don't need to put any more up for us. Of course, you can use the smaller, more tender beet greens as a green. So you can saute that, people can put them in smoothies, but my chickens adore beet greens. And so I like to give them all the extra scraps that I can from the garden this time of year. So I bring them out to them and they will make short work of these beet greens. And Now it's time to get these beets all scrubbed up and prepped for canning. Canning is one of my favorite ways to preserve beets simply because I don't have a root cellar or the cold storage space to store these beets in any other manner. And one of my mom's favorite treats along with mine are sweet pickled beets. So we're getting ready to scrub these up and fill the jars with my cinnamon beet pickles. No matter which method of canning you're doing, if you're doing a pickled water bath or you're going to pressure can them, you definitely need to peel your beets. It's a must with canning safety. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to just put them in a hot water bath. You don't want to cook them all the way, but just a little bit and then immediately put them in cold water, cool them off. And then the skins just slip off so easily. And because we left those beet greens on, you will still have a lot of beet colored juice in the water, but they don't bleed as much. And it also gives you something to hold on to as you are removing the beet peels. And I have to say, I feel the beet doesn't get enough credit in the vegetable realm in the vegetable garden. People always like to say that beets taste like dirt, which they can have an earthy flavor, but honestly, they lend themselves so well to so many dishes, of course pickled, and I like to just eat them straight out of the jar after they've been pickled, but adding pickled beets to a salad or a bed of greens and then putting a little bit of like candied pecans on there with some goat cheese or feta, oh my goodness, you guys, it is one of the best salads 
out there. And then without pickle, just your regular beets. We love them roasted with garlic. And again, putting in a little bit of goat cheese at the end is so delicious. But one of the other ways that you can use beets is to puree them up and put them in a chocolate cake. It is delicious. It's a very old fashioned recipe. And I will share the recipe link with you guys if you wanna make that. And I highly recommend it. It's one of the best chocolate cakes you will ever have. So here I have got my beets all prepped and ready to go and we're dumping them into the pickling brine and we'll just let those all come heat up really quick back to a boil and then they are going to go into the mason jars to can up our pickles. I can't think of much that looks more Christmassy than a gorgeous jar of pickled beets. And because, as I mentioned, this happens to be my mom's favorite, I hope you're not watching mom because these are gonna be going into your Christmas basket. I love to be able to use our homegrown food in order to create gifts. And every year I know each person's favorite in my family and they get a couple of jars snuck into their Christmas goodie basket. Now, if you still have beets that are growing and in the ground and you begin experiencing those really hard frosts, what we call killing frosts, where you're experiencing temperatures, overnight lows that are below 30 degrees Fahrenheit, they're down in the 20s, you've got a couple of options. If the beets are at harvestable size, so they're as large as you would like them to get, it's okay to go ahead and leave them in the ground. But if they go through just a few of those killing frosts and especially repeated ones, you'll start to see some damage on the leaves. And then as it gets even further down into those 20 degrees overnight, they're pretty much going to stop growing. So they're not going to exceed the size that they are right there. Now, once you go beyond just getting the frost and you actually are experiencing freezes. So a frost is just killing the vegetation, but then during the day, the soil gets warmed up, everything is thawed out, and you're not having the top inches of your soil where they get really hard and froze. When you start to experience deep freezes, at least where I live, my beets will not make it through. Now you can mulch them and you can try to put down a whole bunch of mulch, but here we'll get uh, periods where we'll get a lot of frost and a lot of hard freezes and then we'll go through a period where we get just really rainy and soggy and so we go through a thaw and freeze cycle repeatedly throughout our fall and winter months now my carrots will winter over and be just fine in the ground like that my garlic does great and i mulch that my beets do not they end up rotting once we enter into that thaw and freeze cycle so you've got a couple of options if the beets are harvestable size you can mulch them and leave them in for a few weeks and they'll be okay. I've done that, but they won't overwinter all the way. The other thing that you can do is you can use, and this is especially true if they haven't reached full size yet, and you're like, man, I just need a couple more weeks of growing on these babies before the roots are more a harvestable size. That is to use row covers. These row covers are super easy to use and you can see how they come in that length. I'll make sure and provide a link for you guys in the video description below where you can see where I get mine there and they do really well. So I'm coming out here right now. It's about 4 p.m. in the afternoon and you can see that they aren't having a whole lot of sun left. The sun is starting to dip down and it's hitting the tree line. It's going to go behind the mountains there shortly. I've got another row of beets over there too, next to the broccoli that I've got covered up. So in the morning when the sun is on the garden fully, I do open this up so that they can get a little bit of airflow, but about an hour before the sun goes down, when they still have warmth in there, I'm going to come and seal these back up on both ends. And that's going to allow these beets to continue to grow. They'll have enough warmth because you're going to get about, but when in bright sunlight, even in the winter sunlight, we're entering in now late fall you're still going to get about a 10 degree increase of temperature inside here and that's going to be enough to help those beets continue to develop the root underneath and to continue to grow instead of going into more of that dormancy state when they start to get those really cold temperatures that they normally would so i can get more growing season out of these beets until they're large enough to harvest
Thankfully, not all of the fall vegetables have to be covered with row covers in order to keep growing and producing. So the broccoli is nearing ready for the first harvest picking and the garlic is nestled underneath the mulch there of the straw to hibernate until growing conditions are right come early spring. If you enjoyed this video and learning more about homesteading and gardening through all of the seasons, make sure that you hit subscribe and the bell so that you're notified as soon as our new videos are released every week. Let me know in the comments below some of your favorite ways to extend the harvest and some of your favorite ways to use beets and those root fall vegetables in your recipes and cooking. And if you've got any questions or other things that you would like to see that we're doing in the fall and winter season here on the homestead, let me know so I can make sure and create a video for you. And don't forget to grab those links below for some of my favorite recipes as well as those handy dandy row covers to extend your growing and gardening season. Okay, I gotta go grab some more firewood and keep that fire going.